So now that we know about the anatomy of the kidney and how things work a little bit, how the nephron works, let's just go through real quickly and look at the circulation of the blood flow in and out of the kidney. So we're going to start back at our most basic, our aorta, and we have this descending aorta that goes down the entire length of our abdominopelvic region. And off of this descending aorta, the renal artery branches off and it goes out to the kidney. And then once it gets to the pelvic region in the kidney, which is right here, we're going to switch to the little uh, arteries that are inside the kidney. Now, when we go from the pelvic region and up the minor calyxes until we get to the base of the pyramids, there's these segments. The artery splits off into these segments. The renal artery splits off into these segments and each goes up to a pyramid through the minor calyx up into the pyramid, uh, the pyramids of, of the kidney. And since these are the segments that the renal artery branches out of, this would be called the segmental artery or arteries. So the segmental arteries go from the pelvis the, pel the renal pelvis through the segments of the minor calyxes and the major calyxes up until it gets to the pyramids. So those are called segmental arteries. And then once they're up at the bottom of the pyramids, they're going to go up through those um, interlobes. Remember when we talked about the columns of cortical tissue in between each pyramid? and these columns go in between the pyramids and their uh, interlobar. Um, they make up the sides, the edges of each lobe of the kidneys. So these arteries are going to go up in between the lobes of the kidneys. And so since it's between the lobes of the kidneys, and we're going to do one on the side there. Between the lobes of the kidneys, it's going to be called interlobar arteries. And remember, inter, I-N-T-E-R, means between. So between the lobes, interlobar. Now we, that we've got those interlobar arteries that's taken us to the top of the pyramids of where the pyramid arcs around like this. See how the tops of the pyramids make kind of a little curvature? They make an arc. Well, these arteries arc over the arcs of the pyramids. They go over the arcs of the pyramids. So they're going to be called arcuate See, it's got that word arc in it, arcuate arteries. And that means they're going to arc over the top of the pyramids. And we can do this on all of the, on over all of the pyramids if we want to. And so somewhere along the lines, these, let's go to that very first pyramid on the left and I'll show you. Somewhere along the lines over the top of the arc of the pyramid, it's going to stop and it's going to change directions and make a left turn and it's going to radiate out into the cortical region of the kidney. And see how these, this is going to radiate out into the cortical region of the kidney from the arcuate arteries. So it's going to make little radiant stems going out up above the pyramids into the cortical region. So those are going to be called the cortical, because it's in the, they're in the cortical region now, the cortical radiate, because
because they radiate into the cortex artery or arteries. So cortical radiate arteries are going to come up and radiate out into the cortex like you see here. And then off of there, let me get my pen uh, size a little skinnier because now we're going to have these little teeny tiny skinny arteries which are called arterioles and arterioles, arterioles mean skinny arteries. So we're going to have these arterioles branch off of the cortical radiate arteries like little tree branches. They're just going to branch off like that in different branches. And these are going to uh, branch off and at the end of each one of these uh, branches of arterioles we're going to have the glomerulus hanging there like cherries on a tree or apples on a tree branch. We're going to have glomeruluses at the end of each of these skinny arteries or arterioles. So these arterioles are what go into the glomerulus um, and make those capillaries inside the Bowman's capsule. So what we call these, since they're arteries going into the, into the renal corpuscle, they're going to be afferent, afferent, because afferent means in, into, so afferent arterioles. So the afferent arterioles, these little teeny tiny tree branches, that branch off of the cortical radiate arteries are going to be where the renal corpuscles uh, hang at the end of them, like just like apples on a, a tree branch. Now here's a close-up, um, a better close-up of just one lobe in the kidney. And remember, the lobe includes the pyramid, here's the pyramid, and then part of a column on either side. So this white cortical tissue on either side of the pyramid is a column. And then part of the cortex is above the pyramid and it arcs up above the pyramid. And of course this part being the cortex, of course this is cortical tissue as well. So what we're looking at here is a close-up of once the arteries get to the pyramid. So after the segmental arteries through the major and minor calyx, the arteries continue up right next to the pyramid in between the lobes of the kidneys. And so this section from here to here is going to be called the interlobar because inter means between, so between the lobes, interlobar arteries. And there's one in between each lobe of the kidney. So there's one over here too. It ends right there and it starts right down here. So these interlobar arteries, then they make a turn and they turn and start going up over the arc of the top of the pyramid. So here would be the arc of the top of the pyramid. So here's the arc. You see how this arcs up a little bit at the top of the pyramid. So these arteries make a turn and they arc up over the top of the pyramid. So since they arc over the arc of the pyramid, we're going to call these arc uet, arc uet arteries. And you can see there's one on the right side also. It makes a left turn 
and it arcs on top of the pyramid, this artery right here. So that's arcuate arteries. Now the arcuate arteries, once they get to the top of the pyramid, they're going to make another turn and they're going to radiate out into the cortex. Because remember right here, from here to here, from the top of the pyramid to the outside of the kidney is the cortex. And so these arteries are going to turn and they're going to radiate out into the cortex up above the pyramid. If you can see that, see these radiating, kind of like tree trunks, they radiate out into the cortex. So since they radiate out into the cortex, we are going to call these cortical radiate arteries. So cortical radiate arteries, they radiate out into the cortex. And here's another one right here that stands up. Now then we have one more for you. Now you can see off of the cortical radiate arteries are these little tree branches that branch off and they have a little ball at the end of them like an apple hanging off of a tree branch. But we're just looking at these branches right now. They branch off the cortical radiate arteries and see we have another cortical radiate artery and these little tiny branches that branch off. These are going to be called afferent arterioles. And they're called arterioles, not arteries, because arterioles is just a word for little bitty teeny tiny arteries. So we're going to call them arterioles instead of arteries. And they're afferent because afferent actually means in or into. What are they going into? They're going into this renal corpuscle, which is these, which are these apple looking things that are hanging on the end of the afferent arterioles. The afferent arterioles actually go into these renal corpuscles, the apple looking things, and I'll just draw right there, renal corpuscle. And the afferent arterioles go into the renal corpuscle, and that is what makes the glomerulus. They turn into even smaller arterioles, which are called capillaries, and that's what makes the glomerulus, which is inside the renal corpuscle. So now I'm going to show you a kind of a close-up of what's going on here. Here's we have the pyramid here, and in between the lobes of each pyramid, we're going to have the interlobar arteries go up like that. And so, inter meaning between, lobar. So here's an interlobar artery in between each lobe of the kidney. And then it's going to make a turn and arc up over the arc of the pyramid. So this would be called the arcuate. See, it's got the word arc in it. Arcuate arteries. And then when it gets up over the pyramid, it's going to make another turn and it's going to radiate out into the cortical region, into the cortex. So this would be called the, the cortical radiate artery. Now after the cortical radiate artery is standing up there, Branching off of the cortical radiate artery are little tiny branches, little tree branches like this. And 
those are called the afferent arterioles. Afferent meaning into and arterioles meaning a skinny artery. And what are they going into? Well, they're going into the renal corpuscle, which are these apple looking things that hang on the end, that look like they're hanging on the ends of these afferent arterioles. See, renal corpuscle, renal corpuscle, renal corpuscle. Now, let's look at one of these afferent arterioles and renal corpuscles up close. So we have an afferent arteriole that branches out and we have the renal corpuscle which is on the end of this and it's the sphere. Now inside this renal corpuscle the afferent arteriole gets skinnier. So it goes inside of the renal corpuscle and it, the afferent arteriole gets skinnier, which is called capillary, which is a very, very skinny arteriole, a teeny tiny arteriole. These are capillaries and they make this winding mess inside the renal corpuscle like that and then they come out another end. So these capillaries, I'm gonna put capillaries, are called the glomerulus. Of the renal corpuscle. So the orange part, the outside, the outer shell, is called the Bowman's capsule. And we went over this before in a previous video. And then the red capillaries in there are called the glomerulus. And so put together, the Bowman's capsule and the glomerulus together is called the renal corpuscle. The whole apple. And so this would be the afferent artery or arteriole, afferent arteriole, and it goes into the renal corpuscle, turns into these capillaries called the glomerulus, and then they eventually go out of the corpuscle. And when they go out, they won't be called the afferent arteriole anymore. They'll be called the efferent arteriole. Because efferent, think exit. So they both start with E. Efferent arterioles exit out of the renal corpuscle. Okay, so now that we have seen uh, what leads up to the arteries that lead up to the glomerulus, which are a bunch of capillaries inside the renal corpuscle, now we're uh, talking about the efferent arteriole coming out of the other side, and efferent means exit, remember? But check out this, uh, this renal corpuscle with the glomerulus in it. So this is the renal corpuscle. And there has to be an out from this renal corpuscle where the filtrate comes out, which the filtrate is what's going to turn into urine. So this has a tube that comes out of it. 
and this is where the filtrate comes out. And this tube does this very convoluted up and down thing, and we call that the proximal convoluted tubule. And then it goes down and does a loop-de-loop, -loop. and then that's the uh, Henley loop of Henley. And then it comes back up, does another convoluted um, twisty and turny thing. That's the distal convoluted tubule, and it empties out into the collecting duct, which goes all the way down through the pyramid into the minor calyx. Now, so now that we have, let's label these for a minute. Now that we can see where this stuff comes out, here is the proximal convoluted tubule. Here is the loop of Henle. And then here is the distal because it's distant from the uh, renal corpuscle, distal convoluted tubule, and then that empties into the collecting duct. And it starts to be urine right about down here when the loop of Henle loops around and starts to come back up. This is ur now urine. It's not called filtrate anymore. It's called urine when it comes back up here. And so it goes through the distal convoluted tubule as urine, and it empties out as urine into the collecting duct, goes down through the collecting duct, through the pyramid, into the uh, minor calyx. So now that we remember this, let's go back to this efferent arteriole right here, this efferent arteriole. And remember, exit. Efferent means exit. So this is the arteriole that exits from the renal corpuscle. It comes out, and what it does is it comes down and it wraps around this proximal convoluted tubule. It goes down, it wraps around the loop of Henle, and it comes down and as it loops around uh, the proximal convoluted tubule and the loop of Henle, it's no, they're no longer uh, called efferent arterioles. They've actually gotten smaller. And what is a smaller, tinier version of an arteriole? Is a capillary. So these are all capillaries that are wrapping around these tubules, and then it comes back and it comes around and it wraps around the distal convoluted tubule, like that. So when they're capillaries, capillaries, their name is different depending on what kind of nephron that is that they're wrapping around. So if you have the, I'll write it over here because it's longer, if this loop of Henle, if this loop goes all the way down and goes down very far down into the pyramid and comes back up. That is a juxta medullary nephron. And we went over this in a previous video. And so the name of these capillaries the name of these capillaries that wrap around the juxtamedullary nephron are called the vasa recta. Vasa recta is the name of the capillaries. Now, if this loop of Henle is exactly how I drew it, which is mostly in the cortical region and the cortex. And as you can see, it doesn't really go down deep into the pyramids that much. It just kind of dips down there just a little bit. Um, so this would be called, this would be called a cortical nephron. And in a cortical nephron, it still has these capillaries going or looping around it. But the capillaries are called peri, and peri means surrounding, peri tubular, so surrounding the tubules, paratubular capillaries. 
So these capillaries that come out, we start at the efferent arteriole coming out of the renal corpuscle. The arteriol gets skinny and turns into capillaries that loop around the whole loop of Henle, the whole proximal convoluted tubule, the distal convoluted tubule, everything. It loops around all of these and those are capillaries. If it's in the cortical nephron, which just goes down to the top of the pyramid, like you see here, then they're called paratubular capillaries. But if that nephron, if that loop of Henle were to extend down way far down into the pyramid, that would be called a juxtamedullary nephron, and those capillaries would be called the vasa recta. Now after those capillaries get finished wrapping themselves around the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle, and the distal convoluted tubule, where does that, where do those capillaries lead to? Where does the blood supply lead to? Well, what happens is the capillary, the capillary at that point has turned into a vein. So now the capillary is a vein which is a little thicker than the capillary and it goes back down toward the pyramid. So if you remember the artery that went up away from the pyramid into the cortex was called the cortical radiate artery. So this vein that's going back down through the cortex back down toward the pyramid is going to be called the cortical radiate vein. So cortical radiate vein. And then this cortical radiate vein is going to make a sharp turn when it gets to the top of the pyramid and it's going to arc over the top arc of the pyramid and that is going to be called the arcuate vein. So arc, it has that word arc in it, arcuate vein. Just like that arcuate artery that we had uh, arcing over the top of the pyramid. Now as the arcuate vein gets to the end of the pyramid, it makes another turn and it dips down into in between the lobes and remember the lobe is the pyramid and part of the cortical uh, column next to it. So this vein goes down in between there on the other side of the cortical tissue on the edge of the pyramid. And when the vein has turned and is going now down in between the lobes of the kidneys, that's going to be called the enter inter meaning between inter lobar vein and that inter lobar vein is going to go all the way down through the ma minor and major calyxes into the pelvis the renal pelvis and it's going to turn into the renal vein So here we zoomed out a little bit so you can see the whole kidney. So the lobes of the kidney are in between the columns on either side of the pyramid, including the pyramid and then the column on the other side of the pyramid and then the cortex above it. These are each lobes of the kidney. So see there's column material, there's cortical material on either side of each and every one of those pyramids. So I won't outline all of it for you. But so we have the, uh, the renal corpuscle, remember, is up here in the cortical region and its tube comes out, it does a little convoluted thing, and it goes down into the pyramid, comes back up, does another little convoluted thing, and empties 
into the collecting duct. The collecting duct goes all the way down through the pyramid and empties out into the minor calyx. Now the arteries, the main uh, renal artery comes from the aorta. Here's the aorta. Aorta. The renal artery comes out from the aorta and it goes in and then it gets a little bit smaller and it goes up in segments to in between the lobes of the kidney, in between each lobe of the kidney. And these are called segmental arteries. So after they've gotten up to the bottom of the pyramid in between each lobe, they get a little bit skinnier and they go up alongside the lobe, each lobe and the kidney in between the pyramids and in between the lobes. So what are they called when they're arteries that go up in between the lobes and the kidneys? They're called inter, meaning between, lobar, the lobes, arteries. Now, once they've gotten up to the top of each lobe, the top of the pyramid in each lobe, they make a turn and they arc over the arc of the pyramids. So see, here's another one, an interlobar, and it arcs over the arc of the pyramids. This arcs over the arc of the pyramids. So those are called arc, arcuate arteries. Then they make a turn and they radiate outward to the cortex region through the or through the cortex region. They go up and out through the cortex. See this goes up the arc and then it goes up and out through the cortex. And then from there a little branch hangs over. Oh, and those up and out, the ones that go through the cortex are called cortical radiate because they radiate outward arteries. And then they have a little branches that hang off of the cortical radiate arteries and that is where the renal corpuscle is at the end of those. So those are called afferent arterioles. And then when the artery exits the renal corpuscle, it's called an efferent, E for exit, efferent arterioles. And then once it exits the renal corpuscle, it wraps around the whole loop of Henle. It goes down and it wraps and it comes back up, wraps around everything. And those are called capillaries, and it depends on which nephron you're talking about, what the name of the capillaries are. They're either called paratubular capillaries or the vasa recta. And so after the capillaries um, from the efferent arterioles, after the capillaries end up wrapping around the loop of Henle, they turn into a vein, and the vein goes back toward the pyramid that goes back through the cortex and toward the top of the pyramid. And so that would be called the cortical radiate, oh, radiate vein. And then the vein makes a turn and goes up over the arc of the pyramid. So that would be called the arcuate vein. And then it goes back down through in between the lobes of the kidneys. So we call those the interlobar veins. And the interlobar veins go all the way back down 
all the way until it gets to the renal pelvis right around in this area and it turns into the renal vein they it gets really big and it turns into a big major vein the renal vein which comes back out just like the renal artery went in but instead of the aorta it goes into the inferior vena cava which is right next to the aorta running up and down just like the aorta is but it's a vein so the blood circulation through the kidney is you start with the aorta going down your uh, abdominal pelvic cavity and branching off from that is your renal artery your renal artery turns into segmental arteries your segmental arteries turn into into interlobar arteries then they turn and go up over the arc of the pyramid so they, these are called arcuate arteries then it radiates out through the cortex so it's called cortical radiate arteries and then branching off of the cortical radiate arteries are smaller um, arteries called arterioles and they enter into the renal corpuscle so into means afferents so we're going to call these afferent arterioles and then inside the renal corpuscle it turns into the glomerulus which is a bunch of capillaries and then it exits the renal corpuscle as an efferent arterial E for exit oh oops arterial and then it turns into capillaries and we're going to call those either paratubular for the short nephrons or the vasa recta for the long juxtamedullary nephrons then after the capillaries are finished wrapping around the lube of Henle they turn into a vein and they go back toward the top of the pyramid so they follow that same route as the cortical radiate arteries so we're going to call these the cortical radiate veins and then it's going to arc over the top of the pyramid so we're going to call that the arcuate veins and then it's going to turn and go down in between the lobes between the pyramids and the kidney so we're going to call that interlobar and then interlobar is going to go all the way down until all the interlobar veins meet and it's going to get much fatter and it's going to turn into the renal vein and then from the renal vein it's going to dump out into the inferior vena cava